How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to cover how to own Patch Tuesday like a pro. Now, a little bit about my background. I worked vulnerability management for a pretty small book company. Um, so I've been through a lot of Patch Tuesdays to say the least. Um, now, everything I'm talking about in here is not anything specific to that organization. These are just some tips you can take to your business that you work at. Um, and this is just kind of how to sort through a frequent patching cycle that every pretty much every organization is going to have to go through one way or another, whether that's being proactive or being reactive and you're getting breached. So I just got some things here that I want to cover. Um, and then I do have like a, not a sales pitch at the end, but just a, a, a paid thing that your company might be interested in looking into investing in at the end. But everything in here for the most part is going to be things that you could do right away after watching this video. So the first thing that you and I'm, when I say you, I'm saying as an organization, or if you work at an organization and you deal with patch compliance, is identifying your stakeholders. Now, uh, I'm not talking about, you know, a ribeye stake. I'm talking about the people that have a vested interest in Patch Tuesday. So not only is the security team or the vulnerability management team depends on how your organization is structured, uh, the team that handles, you know, determining what is riskiest to the business so you want to identify the you know the blue team so you get the vulnerability management team you have the teams that actually have to do the patching so those are going to be the ones that either are going to patch or accept the risk uh, you're going to have management involved with some of these decisions especially if there's any sort of interruption to services um, and then as always if you're a, a a forward facing business, meaning that you're dealing with customers and like that is your bread and butter of your business is like customers like consumers because you can have businesses where you're not really consumer based and they don't have like you could do downtime for a couple hours and it's not going to really impact your business. So you want to identify your stakeholders right away. Who does what and what exactly or where people are in the business, what do they do and how are they involved with Patch Tuesday? or just any patching in general. Um, so the the vulnerability management team is going to do an assessment of the vulnerabilities, and then the teams that are actually going to be doing the patching, which is more than likely not going to be the VM team, are going to determine whether or not that it's going to cause any impact. So you're going to have the security side of things, and then you're going to have the availability side of things. Those are the two key parts of Patch Tuesday or any sort of patching. You want to have good security, but you also don't want to brick your entire business by putting patches into place because that's going to cause more harm with the business being offline than a security breach. So you got to calculate those things. So you want to identify those teams. Uh, second thing is your patching requirements in your business. Now, this is going to be something you're going to involve a policy team because Patch Tuesday and any sort of patches are going to be a thing every single business is going to have to deal with for as long as I can think of, honestly, because there's always going to be security bugs. There's always going to be the availability issues with security issues. Like the list goes on and on. This is not going anywhere anytime soon. So have requirements in policies basically stating, okay, well, if it meets this threshold of severity, we're going to patch, um, you know, within 48 hours or whatever, three days. Um, if it's not too critical, you know, we could do a week, 30 days, you know, a couple months, really depends. So get those requirements in place and then have something you can measure those requirements on. So most of the time people are going to lean on CVSS score, common vulnerability scoring system. Um, and then number three is what is your threat landscape? So this is kind of just a threat model for lack of better terms. So you're going to do a very basic assessment to see what assets are on your network, which ones are publicly facing, which ones are critical to your business, which ones absolutely, well, I guess that's critical to your business, which ones absolutely cannot be taken offline, whether it's security related or anything like that, which ones cannot be taken offline? Do you have redundancy in place for those? Um, and then which ones are like kind of lower priority, but could be higher priority if the impact of the vulnerability is severe enough. So th these are gonna be things like net scalers, which are gonna be publicly facing. You're gonna have Windows machines deployed to every end user, uh, you know, VPN endpoints, like the list goes on and on. So have a good understanding of what means the most to your business. Um, and then number three, so this is becoming more proactive with uh, Patch Tuesday. So uh, 
Microsoft can send alerts out anytime. I mean, it is a planned thing. Like it's the second Tuesday of every month at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Like that is when Microsoft releases their patches. However, you can get alerts sent uh, to you via email from Microsoft basically stating these are critical, these are important, these are moderate, these are, you know, um, trivial or whatever they call it. Um, and you can get email alerts for that. And that's basically just done automatically, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Every second Tuesday of every month, you'll get that. Um, however, with those, if you're seeing my screen right now, this is the May security updates from Microsoft. And you can see there are a ton. And um, I mean, this includes thing, and this is the second page, by the way. Um, so already 200 updates. I mean, it, it gets nuanced. So you get like server 2019, Windows 10, X64, 2008, and all that. Um, but uh, this is going to take a lot of time out of an analyst's day. Um, I mean, I was there and having to review every single release by Microsoft every month takes a lot of time. And this is where like finance comes into place. You take like an analyst salary, you multiply it by how many hours they spend per month doing this, you multiply it by 12, and then that's the cost of Patch Tuesday. And then the finance team wants to figure out a way how to bring that cost down. Now I'm gonna pause the video real quick. I wanna just show exactly what I'm talking about because there are costs associated with patching and it's not something a lot of security people really take into account when it comes to prioritization. Now our job in security is you know, a wet dream of ours is 100% compliance. However, we have to understand the fact that that's not always going to be the case. And there is going to be some risk acceptance and, you know, involved with some of that. And that's totally okay if you get the proper people to sign up on risk. But I want to show and demonstrate the costs associated with Patch Tuesday. So let's assume that you, you're working at like a mid-level, you know, organization. You have 5,000 employees that have to, you know, update their computers. So let, let's get into it. So, um, we're actually not going to calculate that, um, but there are some ways we could cut costs with Patch Tuesday, and I talk about that uh, with the recorded feature add-on. So let's take, for example, that you have a security team of like 10 people, and let's say five of those people are involved with Patch Tuesday. So you have five people. Let's take an average salary of them, let's say 40 bucks. So per hour, the company pays them 200 bucks in salary. So with every patch Tuesday with like normal processes that are currently going on where you're reviewing each CVE, let's assume that each of those people, five people are spending uh, two hour, two hours per patch Tuesday to review. So 400 bucks per month, the company is paying people to do patch Tuesday stuff. You multiply that by 12, that's $4,800 specifically spent on reviewing Patch Tuesday. Now, there's other things I'm not taking into account here where you're taking into account, you know, people patching, uh, the other teams that are doing like uh, testing and all that, but that is something that is outside of the control and something that, you know, is not of interest of the security team to cut costs on. But the one, the, the two things that we could control here is A, the salary, and you probably don't want to change people's salary to make it cheaper. But the one thing you could spend money on or cut costs on is the time of responding and reviewing. So now let's take, you know, instead of you have five people reviewing this, you have one person because you have like this recorded future add-on and you know, they're being paid 40 bucks an hour. So the company's paying that person, well, 40 bucks an hour. Um, and instead of three hours they're spending on it, they got that add-on and it really only takes them, um, let's say, um, what is, let's say, I don't know, uh, half, half an hour. So we'll do um, 0.5. So they are spending, sorry, did that wrong. I hit the wrong button. Clear that out. So 40 bucks times one, so that's 40 times 0.5. So they're spending 20 bucks because they have that recorded feature add-on. It's like super simple to use because it just shows you everything on the page. So 20 bucks per patch Tuesday times 12, 240 bucks. So you have the cut, the cost savings of what? Um, you know, 480 minus 240. Can't do math off the top of my head. So. Uh, 4,800 minus 240, you have a cost savings of $4,500 and or pretty much 4,500 bucks because that add on that I will show you how to use for prioritization, but that's a cost savings you could do right away. Just like that on with the video. 
And most of the time, that's going to be automation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you a, and, and this is going to be something your organization is going to have to pay for. Um, so apology, I, actually, I, I take that back. There is a free browser extension, um, but the paid variant of this brings kind of more detail uh, into the vulnerability itself. So this is the going to be the recorded future browser add-on. Um, so basically, this is like the May update and um, uh, the browser add-on, oh, the fire department's outside, woo, best friends. Um, but basically it highlights the CVEs um, right here. And this is like a quick and easy way to determine what you need to prioritize right away. Um, so you click right there and you see, okay, we have these different CVEs right here um, and they're all rated 25. It's, risk, it, it's rated from zero to 99. Uh, the highest number being the most critical. So it, let's say example, and, and by the way, it is patch Tuesday today when I'm filming this video, but usually expect any of these patches to have like that risk score go up over time because it's called patch Tuesday and then it's called exploit Wednesday and then it's called attack Thursday. Um, so these risk scores will pretty much go up in the next coming days, but let's say, you know, you're ready to determine, okay, what is our number one priority? And you pull this up and you see a 99. Well, there you go. That CVE right there is instantly something you want to take a look at. Now, you'll just see that risk score 99 with the free version. But if you were to be a recorded future customer, you click on that and you get more details about that specific vulnerability. And you could see, oh, this is what triggered the risk score of 99. There's active exploitation. There's like C2 servers all over the place. People are just mass scanning this. So, I mean, it goes on and on. So um, as an analyst, you know, I would spend, you know, all day just going through this. And a, a, a technique I would do is I'd actually download the CSV, throw it into, you know, Excel. I don't have Excel because I'm bootlegging Windows, but um, I would basically control A, all of this, and I would just hit the filter icon or filter icon. And then I'd go to severity and then I would check, you know, critical or important. So I'll just do critical. So here's all the critical critical CVEs right there. And then one by one, I would have to, or at least for some of these, I would break it down because like some of these are dupes, like you can see 1024, 1024, 1028. But I look at like each individual one, like, okay, this one's bad. We should probably prioritize that. And then I, you know, I'd spend a few hours a day, but having that browser add on, um, you know, coming back here or over there and I just have that right away that like, oh, okay, there we go. Like, I can't even tell you like how, like I'd spend like a couple hours a day um, or every patch Tuesday, like reviewing these and, you know, a couple hours, let's say three, about three hours. So that's about $90 right away, right there that I would spend, I was, was, let's say about a hundred bucks in time paying me to review this. Um, so about a hundred dollars, give or take. Um, and right away, like, just like that, like I've, I've eliminated that, you know, three hours of time and I'm like, okay, well, let's prioritize, you know, let's say CVE 2020, 10, 10 was rated 99 or whatever. It's like, okay, well, that's my prioritization. Good to go. And I saved a bunch of time. Then I could go focus on other things. Um, but however, uh, that is not the only method. I just think the recorded future browser add-on for Patch Tuesday or Oracle quarterly releases or any sort of patching that is like on a regular schedule, uh, it saves a ton of time with analysts, uh, I guess analyst time, and that also equates to cost. Um, but however, if that is not an option for your organization, there are mainstream news uh, um, outlets like uh, ZDNet, Bleeping Computer, um, Hacker News, they will always have some sort of write-up about Patch Tuesday. Brian Krebs will probably have one as well. Um, just talking about, okay, well, CVE, whatever is like critical. Uh, and then you could, you could go off that. But um, I will say the old school way of just going one by one, reviewing each of these is a little archaic in my opinion. Um, and it, if you can automate your way to like, automate your way out of this, I would do definitely recommend doing that because doing this every month would kill me. But anyways, that is it for this video. Uh, I am also super happy. I hit 1000 subscribers on YouTube today, um, which, you know, isn't a huge milestone, but like, I've always been a fan of just like, I hit 100 today. I hit 500 today. Now it's like a thousand. Um, so with that, like, I really like, 
for lack of better terms, like I, I'm really happy I got here and I want to give back in some way. So comment down below and then, you know, I'll give it a week. I'll pick one random person in the comments and then I will buy you a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, you know, the whole kit, like Raspberry Pi, the solid state or the, the solid state, I wish, um, or it, the, um, the micro SD card, uh, a case, um, uh, what else do you need? Micro SD, and then you know I might I might throw some extra goodies in there. Like I'm gonna hook it up, um, and that's just my thank you to all of you. Um, so just leave a comment down below, uh, share this video, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, like all of that. Um, that that would mean a lot to me. So one lucky person, uh, and you can hold me accountable for it. Uh, come May 19th, I will announce in my next video or in the comments, one of the two. Who won? And then, you know, we'll we'll figure out the logistics offline on how to do that. Uh, just join my Discord. Um, that's also going to be a requirement, by the way. You join my Discord. I'll put a link down below. And, uh, yeah, I'll choose a winner, and then I'll I'll message you on Discord, and then we can figure out logistics if, you know, if you want to do Amazon or anything like that. Like, we can figure that out. So, anyways, that's it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye.